Starting a new business in any form is scary. In fact, starting any business is scary. Let's look at the interior design industry. It's a service industry. You're going to get difficult clients, perform strange hours, ask to do strange things and problem solve on the hop. Secondly, it's personal. Of course it is. You're going into someone's home. Why would it not be personal? You're going into people's lives for a protracted period of time. You'll meet their families, their pets and their friends. If you don't want to know that aspect of your clients' lives, then you're in the wrong profession. But what is an interior design business anyway? Put simply, it's helping someone else. Your skills are guiding them to the right design, layout and style for them. Notice I said them and not you. This is such a common misconception. Years ago I was a stylist and over those years I met so many other stylists who styled each of their clients in exactly the same way. As an interior designer I've met designers who do the same thing and only do their own designs in the same way each time with no client involvement whatsoever. They won't change, budge or make any alterations. Not only is this bad business sense but it's short term it's limiting for their design. You have to be able to design all sorts of ways, not just your signature style. The essence of being a good designer is being able to design different styles, not just one way, be it Eastern fusion, minimalistic, neutrals, retro, shabby chic or whatever. I'm different in that I work collaboratively. It's a team design, the client and me. Yes, it's great to be left alone sometimes and get really creative, but in my experience, when the client says, I don't want to make any decisions, that means I want you to come up with solutions to all the problems I give you at the start, and then some more solutions to the problems I create later. That's what happens, that's the reality. What this means is that the vast majority of clients have ideas and themes they want to use. Again, be prepared that this is going to happen. Remember, it's their property, not yours. Once you know it's the right industry for you and you accept that it's a service industry for others, you can then decide whether you want to be part of a larger team or start your own business. Today we're going to focus on your own business. Let's look at the four skills that you'll need. Confidence to do this and self-belief. When I say this, I mean confidence in your team and having the tools to do this. I also mean confidence in your time to do it. You cannot rush the process of design. Things take longer than you think and you are relying on other workmen and suppliers. Things sometimes take more money than the client thinks and you need to be able to communicate this and all the changes to the client professionally. All this takes confidence in your abilities and your team's ability to deliver. Are you neat and tidy? Are you organised? How is your diary? Is it well thought out? Do you know what the plan for the week is? Do you know how you're getting to certain places? Do you know what's coming up in two weeks? Do you plan ahead? All of these things need to be thought out. Futuristic and strategic are words that are perhaps quite scary, but you need to develop them if you are going to plan an entire project. Being a designer isn't just designing, it's project management. You need to convey what you want to a builder, soft furnishing makers, carpenters, electricians, roofers, delivery men and installers. Plus you'll need to be able to keep the client informed to a degree and you need to keep them happy and excited about the project. Problem solving. Things will go wrong and unexpected items will come up. I completed an Edwardian house a few years ago and a random steel beam appeared in a very ancient extension that was being rebuilt. The architect missed it and so did the structural surveyor. Even the previous owners didn't know that it was there. It had to be removed. That cost extra time and money and the client had to pay for both. There are no ways around something like that but you have to know what to do. You have to make the decision there and then or get a cost and relay that news and the cost to the client. Other problems are more commonplace. Deliveries are the most common holdup. This wouldn't be a problem in most people's lives normally, but when a delivery of lights is promised and the electricians are due on another job, you can have issues. Another problem is sickness. Issues with workmen are few and far between, thank goodness, but other, other one-man band suppliers can suddenly fall ill or take time off for a variety of reasons. Contingency planning is vital. 
If someone can't make a delivery and complete an installation of curtains, do you rearrange? Can you rearrange? All these things have to be thought out and you need to give yourself extra leeway to cover your schedule. Clients won't be interested if a workman or supplier can't get to you because of a strike that they've known about for weeks or even a funeral that they've also known about for quite some time. You need to jump in and save that schedule. Sometimes there really is nothing that you can do. Trucks breaking down, gas leaks from adjoining properties, police blocking roads due to flash mob protesters, I've had it all. In these cases, you have to reroute plans to another day and make sure everything and everyone has been told and that they know the change of plans. You cannot just shrug your shoulders. This is where the practice of giving yourself plenty of time comes into its own. Where are you placing yourself? High-end, families, commercial? What is your unique selling point, your USP? What do you want to become known for? What are you and what are you not? Knowing this and sticking to it is crucial. Do not send mixed messages. Being a drack of all trades and a master of none is often an issue for designers. In our quest to help anyone and everyone, especially at the beginning, we tend to take on everything. I know as I've done it. You get asked all the time, do you do X, Y and Z? And invariably I say, yes, I do, because I do. There's not much that I don't do. It's the truth. But when you're starting out, be careful not to take on too much. I specialize in three things designing family properties, rental property renovation, and heritage building refurbishment, often into luxury apartments, but keeping the heritage aspects intact. You need to ask yourself and establish why you're different. I'm more relaxed than highbrow, and crucially I look after those properties going forward when the work is done and everyone has moved in. My marketing USP is that I work with my clients. I don't dictate what they should like, feel, or have. You'd be amazed how many designers say that they do this, but don't actually do it. So there you have it. Four points to nail down. Confidence, organisation, problem solving and business acumen. If you concentrate on these, your design business will thrive. Good design is inherent and will be recognised. But if you don't convince your client on your ideas, you don't organise in a timely manner, you can't fix a problem quickly and you don't market yourself clearly, your belief floundering around and not travel in any direction but around in circles. So that's all for this time. If you have learned anything from this video, like it, share it and subscribe to this channel for more of my words of wisdom. Happy designing!